Hello, my historical fashion friends, and welcome to dye journey number four, where we will be experimenting with dyeing with weld. I'll be showing you this experiment on three different pieces of fabric. One of them is a wool mordanted with two ounces of alum. The other is a muslin bag and a piece of a linen cotton blend. Both of those were unmordanted. The muslin bag was actually used to hold the dye stuff, so it was a bit of an accidental experiment. I used the actual plant matter, not an extract, which I do believe makes a difference. Hopefully in the future I will be purchasing a scale so I can weigh my fabric and get more accurate calculations when I am purchasing my dye stuffs. And now let's get to the process. First I scoured my fabric to clean it. I used plain, unscented organic dish soap. I moved it around a few times during the day and let it soak overnight, then rinsed it out the next day. That next day, I prepared the Morden bath. I dissolved four ounces of alum and about two teaspoons of cream of tartar in hot water. I stirred it until it was dissolved and clear. Then I added it to the large pot of water. I used my kettle to add additional water so I didn't have to carry the full pot from the sink and spill it all over the floor. I stirred the water to mix, then added my washed fabric to the pot. I turned the stove on to a simmer and let it sit for an hour, turning the fabric occasionally. I was trying very hard not to agitate the fabric too much, as in my last dye experiment with this fabric, a lot of shrinkage occurred. After an hour, I removed the mordanted fabric from the pot and stored it in a plastic container while I prepared the dye bath. To create the dye bath, I poured my four ounces of dried weld into this muslin bag and tied it so that it was completely closed. Then I added it to my warm pot of water with the stove set to simmer. Right away, the weld started to turn the water yellow and I was very excited about it. Then I promptly forgot about it and ran back over in haste sometime later, unsure of how much time had passed. Panicked, I immediately turned off the stove and pulled out the dye bag. I then added my fabric to the pot and submerged it. Uh, after much deliberation, I turned the stove on very low as I wasn't sure if I should keep heating the dye water or not. After a couple of hours stirring occasionally, it seemed that not much was happening. Resigned, I transferred the fabric and water to my larger plastic bin and let it sit overnight. The next day, it still looked like not much color change had occurred. So I simmered the bag of dye stuffs a second time, and a lot of bright yellow color came out. I added this to the existing dye bath and let it sit a while longer. I recently found the instructions that came with this and it said to soak the leaves overnight and then make the dye bath. So uh, I accidentally figured that out. It would have been better if I just read the instructions. Now something seemed to be occurring. So I moved the fabric around, trying to turn it to the other side without disturbing the fibers too much. It was at this point I realized how much brighter the bag of dye stuffs was after the second simmer, and so I brought the dye bath and the fabric back to the stove to simmer for another hour. After it cooled a little, I put it back in the plastic bin to sit overnight again. My linen cotton blend seemed to be taking on a pleasant color, even without the mordant. After the second overnight of soaking, I gave up my hopes of a bright yellow wool and decided to rinse off the fabric. I did this gently and used the plastic bin to help me pour the water over top until it ran clear. Then I squeezed out the excess water and hung up the fabric to dry. I then squeezed it out a little more while it was hanging up. I could see some splotchiness around the edges, but overall the dye looked pretty even. And here are the three sets of fabric all dried. Also, side note, I forgot to turn on my mic for recording all of that, so sorry about the audio. Here you can see the fully dyed fabrics and this fabric started off as this color. So if you can see them, 
Let me try to lay them on top of each other a little better. And there you can see the result. It was originally a beige, and this is the same fabric which I used to dye burgundy in my dye journey number three. And you can see it turned out sort of a yellow green color and some of the spots on it actually have a little more dye for some reason. Um, I'm not sure why because I was really careful to actually do a lot of the soaking in a larger bucket this time so I'm not sure what happened here. The only thing I could think is that the soap that I used to scour the fabric actually landed and soaked in here first and that's sort of why the color actually clung to it better. But I am really looking forward to making an apron dress with this fabric. After I get back from my holiday, I will probably actually purchase more weld and try to dye it a brighter yellow because as you can see from the bag of dye stuffs, it's really, really bright. Especially the inside that was actually touching the plant material. It is such an incredibly bright neon yellow and this is really what I was hoping that this would turn out like but I think I would probably have to buy about six times the amount of dye stuffs to actually get this result on this fabric. And here you can see the cotton linen blend and it has this really nice spring greenish yellow color. I think that perhaps there was some dye materials left over even though I really washed the pot. When I dumped out the water from the mordant bath I actually noticed that the water had turned blue and I'm not sure if that has something to do with maybe the chemicals that are in our water here because I think we have really hard water and I live in Los Angeles and there's definitely a lot of I don't know stuff in the water and maybe in the pipes of the building because I didn't even dye with Wode last. I dyed with Wode before the dye prior to this one which was the burgundy dye so I thought if anything it would actually give off more of a red color but it seems that there was something blue left over and I'm not sure if maybe that might also be the result of some of the iron being left over from the previous bath that we had done making the burgundy dye. Okay, so I just actually um, googled like what makes your tap water turn blue because I've also noticed that when I take like a bath, the water becomes blue and apparently it's copper in your pipes and that means it's not safe to drink. If you like videos about dyeing with plant materials, hit the subscribe button and be sure to stay tuned for more experiments. I'm interested in trying to dye with either sage or rosemary because well, from what I've seen, the color is pretty close to this and I kind of want to see what result I might be able to get on this garment, but also part of me kind of wants to keep it as this beige color. So let me know in the comments if you want me to try to dye that or to try to dye on something else. I'm most looking forward to using this as just a little bag to add to my belt. I don't know that it's really historically accurate to have these kind of ties, although they do look like they could be tablet woven pretty easily. But I think it's so cute and I love the color against the orange. So let me know what you think of the results and let me know if you've ever tried dyeing with Weld. I hope you like this video and I look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks for watching.